basically started off with the fact that you know how ai is maybe taking away jobs so and then there is of course there is this utopian opinion and of course dystopian so could you lead us with that absolutely so we're at a place where there's a lot of conversation about ai automating or augmenting and the the focus for a lot of people is whether or not this means is my job safe right. and what am i what am i going to do the greater conversation is more about our relationship with work. So there's a lot of fear around new emerging ways of technology that come every single time. We had the same thing with the internet to some extent where we, we thought this would fracture certain businesses, right. take away jobs from legacy ways of doing things. And it did in some cases, it did take away jobs that were um, you know, people working at bookstores. There aren't many people who do that anymore. Um, other types of work, even digital cinema, same thing. There aren't many people who cut negatives for film anymore. But for many of those industries, those skill sets were applicable to the next analog that came our way from whatever that technology moved us towards. Right. It's hard to see that when you're facing the new technology for the first time. What does that look like for me? And if my job that is automated away in this specific context, what does that mean for me? Like most people think that I'm just out of a job permanently. I'm, I'm on a breadline for the rest of my life. And if you take a look at previous ways of technology, that's not true in the long term. Oftentimes technologies create greater opportunity. There's new markets that, uh, that develop. So for example, um, if you take a look at the um, w automotive, when cars were kind of brought out to society, there were hundreds of thousands of people who took care of horses and that were drivers and that were chauffeurs. All of those jobs went away within right. the course of you know, a while because right. not everybody had an automobile right away. Right. But not only did it take away those jobs and give people new autonomy in their own transportation, but it created new industries. The suburbs were a new invention that were spurred by the automobile. The skiing industry, which is something that's huge in a number of countries, especially where we are right now, that existed because of the automotive industry, because you now have access to a place that was three, four, five uh, hours away where your horse could never have gotten you. Got it. And no one's thinking about the ski industry when they're making the car for the first time. Got it. So the connection here is what we see is what's right in front of us. It's really hard to say, what new markets is AI going to create? What new roles, opportunities, and jobs is it going to create? But it's very easy to take a look at the very specific jobs that it could potentially eliminate. Things like customer service, things like IT support, all have big parts of those jobs that can be automated by IT. So people are worried, what does this mean for me or my sector? And there will be fluctuations. Because even the people at the top, the leaders who say, who see these efficiencies say, ah, I can cut staff and see efficiencies and be rewarded by stock price. Yes, in short term, that's short term thinking. But when those new markets come uh, around, that's where the opportunity is going to be. And when you take a look at what augmentation can happen with jobs, that's where exponential growth happens. You don't cut your way to growth. You cut your way to efficiency. But growth comes by giving people new potential powers and saying, let's create together, got not it. how can I get rid of you? Got it, got it, got it. So uh, I think one, another thing that you actually did speak about is basically two things. One is machines are efficient and yes. humans are known, known, known to be inefficient. Yes, Okay. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so uh, from, from there, uh, what implies, I mean, of course, you know, there is there is job market at the picture right now. Yep. Uh, so, but then uh, there is also a lot of cybersecurity concerns and implications that is basically, you know, coming around. Um, maybe culturally uh, is one of the reasons why we, there is so much of exposure to, you know, both both sides both side of how future is going to look like. What are your basically, you know, understanding? What, do you, what are your predictions for the future? Yeah, so the idea of like being messy versus efficient, we're, we've been so surprised by what can be automated, what can't. Right. This idea that creativity can be encoded by a machine caught a lot of people off guard. Right. Um, but if you take a look at where, where most creativity is published, it's published online. We're creating the training data set for how that work can be automated by machines. And by the day, we're finding new ways that what you and I do on a daily basis can be automated by a machine. These things can become efficient. 
And the if you take a look at what is truly human by nature, a lot of people said, well, only humans can be creative. Only humans can express the soul of who we are in our work. That by the big C creative, creativity as a whole, that right. is true. But specific outputs like art, music, machines are really good at producing that. You can argue whether or not there's any soul or humanity in it, but does the public consume it? That's what matters. Does that machine generated art affect me in a way that I like it? Got it. That's gonna be really important. But when it comes to the inefficiency, in the short term, people are gonna say, my inefficiency is a problem because it doesn't allow me to keep up with the machines. Right. That's the, the wrong frame of trying to compete with this technology. You cannot compete with this technology from a role of efficiency. You'll never win. But if we look at roles where inefficiency is a feature and not a bug, that's where human input flourishes. So the idea of pursuing science, there's so much of science that's gonna be automated in many, many different ways, but the scientific pursuit is messy, it requires experimentation, it requires thinking, it requires moving back and forth and trying things over and over in different ways. Some of that can be automated, but not all of it. And humans' input into science is going to be so much more critical, especially with these new powers that we've been given. So that moves the conversation more towards augmentation than automation. Same thing when I say big C creativity. The idea of creative output, most of the art we see today is two-dimensional, or the music we hear is recorded in a specific way. And AI is moving us to more of a immersive, experiential realm. So 3D, this whole metaverse thing that was kind of hot for a minute. Um, I think AI is going to push us into new media that we will be creating for that require us to direct things rather than just create things. Got it. So we'll be creating scenes and interactions and experiences for people to live within rather than stand at and observe. Um, so that's, that might be hard to see, but what's happening with immersive technologies is also kind of growing up at the same time that these augmented capabilities are giving us the ability to create at scale quickly. Um, most people aren't 3D artists. Most people aren't um, immersive artists, but you can move into the space now without having to be technically proficient in any of those. Got it. So this is basically by your definition, jobs won't go, the job descriptions are gonna change. Yeah, jobs, so the, the idea in the short term is that you won't lose your job, you'll use, lose your job description. And the, the, the meta of all of this is that our relationship with work is gonna change. When you ask somebody what they do or who they are, um, and this is particularly true in the US, um, they say, hey, tell me about yourself. The first thing they tell you about themselves is what they do, do for a living. Exactly. I am a strategist. I am a futurist. I am an accountant. And that long term, I think is going to be somewhat problematic for the future we're entering. Because if we define our worth by our specific function within our workplace, that's going to have a bracing effect when you come to automation when you start thinking about the value that you provide to your organization and how that value is going to expand with this new tool set you have, this new huge suite of capabilities at your fingertips, the idea of a role that is defining your value is going to be completely obliterated. And now you and I can, I can, if I need to, be my own accountant for a short period of time. I can be the project manager who facilitates the project, and then I can be the artist who creates the artwork for a particular thing. that could threaten any one of these jobs or for someone who has no money to hire any of them can exponentially expand the capabilities of an individual or a team. And I think that's gonna be, there's gonna be a fluctuation back and forth where society grapples with this idea of losing lots of jobs and then realizing, oh wait, five people can do the work of 20, that means I don't need the other 15. And then going back and realizing everyone else has cut their way and now your advantage is, well, I need those people back because we can expand so much of what we can do together right. when people realize what these tool sets can do. So I think we are in for a very up and down ride as you and I individually grapple with what this means for us, but organizations and societies also do at the same time. Got it. Okay, so uh, another conversation is around technophilia. Yes. Um, of course, you know, romantic relationships are is might be few, uh, uh, basically inclined towards uh, AI. And then there was another example yes. that you showed today. Her is another example. Mm-hmm. And then there was also examples of, you know, deep 
fake uh, uh, AI and the deep fake uh, basically people and then you know yes. yeah they were, the, there was a research done and then people actually scammed into it and those kind of things are also happening. So do you think there is a heightened risk on this particular domain? Is there a what? A heightened risk on this particular space. Absolutely. Yeah, it, there, there's, uh, we're seeing both ends of the spectrum right away. There is enormous risk that comes with this. And I personally feel in the cybersecurity space, the, it, uh, the attack surface is growing exponentially and the social engineering portion just got mountain high in terms of its potential risk. Right. So we hear a lot of you know, automated agents being able to deploy malicious code without intervention. That's only one piece of the puzzle. When I can call 500 different people and emulate persons of importance to them, their boss or their loved one in a way that can manipulate them to give me what I need, my ability to really lean into social engineering to overtake an organization or get something and extract value becomes exponential. So right. that's massively problematic. You and I are already thinking about how do we not get hacked? How do we make sure that our email is safe or the, our credit card details are safe? That's only one part of the equation. Right. When someone calls up and sounds like your best friend saying, hey, I just got thrown in jail. I need $5,000 bail now or I'm in real big trouble. If it sounds like your best friend, you're gonna do whatever you can to get them that money, whether you have it or not. And they're going to lean on this. And I think that people are going to be very quickly exposed to it. It's already happening. We're seeing people it, uh, affected by this. And we're going to have to be able to label what's happening with these deep fake technologies as coming from an AI or a bot. And the malicious actors aren't going to do that. But what it means is when something doesn't come with a label, that gives you pause and say, ooh, where is this coming from? Who is responsible for this? So there are romantic relationships that could be part of this. There's platonic relationships, work relationships. All of these will be codified and imitated by AI, but it's not AI that's the issue. It's what do people, people do with it? it? Okay. Okay. Lastly, uh, you know, there, there's a serious conversation with open AI and, you know, artificial general intelligence. Yeah. That's, that's the future. Mm -hmm. That's probably where the world is right now heading to. And, but that's yes. one of the reasons why Miku was, you know, pointing out that this is the hottest AI summer. Hottest AI summer on record. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, uh, what are the implications? Especially, you know, of course, of course, it can be good, it can be bad, but, you know, as a futurist. Yes. What do you feel? What's basically in store for us? So the, the challenge when you encounter such a massive change in technology is there are two ends of the conversation. There is that utopian version of it, which right. I think is blinding. And then you have the dystopian version, which is paralyzing. It grips you with fear. Exactly. And the challenge is neither one of them move you towards progress. Um, you can look at the sun and be blinded by it, or you can look at you know, a car coming at you and feel like, I can't move. Um, whereas the real benefit of society is going to come when we start dealing with this on our day to day. Right. The conversations we're having right now saying, what's a solution for me today on, for this technology? Or how do I interact with it? How do I expose myself to it so I know what this actually is rather than taking someone else's word for it? Have I interacted with ChatGPT? Have I played with other versions of AI? Have I spent time knowing what this looks like for me now? It's so important to having really productive conversations about what the future will look like because we get a decision in making this happen. The future doesn't just happen to you. The future is something that develops over time. It never arrives, but I liken it to like a contact sport and there's no room in the sideline for spectators. You're gonna get hit whether you play the game or right, not. Right. So if you put your kid on and get on the field and play, you have a chance at understanding what this is gonna look like and you participate in the wins and losses. And there will be both. There'll be wins and there will be losses. It's not just a straight line to a utopian future. Just like today, we have all sorts of issues with technology. We're gonna have all sorts of issues with technology tomorrow, but it will look very different.